move. We want to move the audience. Of course, everything's going to be anamorphic all the time. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I hope you're all doing great and ready to learn some cool stuff about CG camera work in this first part cinematography series called Smooth Cams. My name is Urban Berdesco, and I worked as a layout lead at Access Studios on quite a few cool shows for Magic the Gathering, Blizzard, and uh, League of Legends. So believe it or not, I used to do live action cinematography as well. So that is why I think I have some cool tips and tricks I can share with everybody. So let's take a look at what we have in store for you today. Hello everybody, just a quick note here. I'm gonna be showcasing work from a lot of other talented artists and studios. Uh, we're gonna give credits to them in the video and in the description down below. That's all, back to the video. Cinematography for CG part one, fluid cams. Uh, I'll try to give as much practical knowledge as I can without being too philosophical about cinematography. Um, and you can see me on the screen here having fun with the VR cam uh, that we had at Axis. I did quite a few shows there and we'll be going through the cinematics that I worked on and I'll be, I'll try to give you my insight and what, like, what the logic was behind those shots. So when it comes to cinematography, it can be quite subjective on what looks good or bad, but always the most important question is what looks right for the particular project? What looks right for the particular project? So not every movie, game, cinematic, or music video has to look like a blockbuster. And um, you know, you would say why? And it's because it doesn't, ser it doesn't serve the story. Imagine something like Toy Story being shot as Saving Private Ryan or The Matrix. Uh, and while those movies have some amazing shots in cinematography, they wouldn't fit the design and aesthetic of Toy Story. Even though Toy Story is playing with different cinematography types and we're gonna be taking a look at those as well. In the most important terms, those other movies would not fit and serve the emotion of the story. So emotion is really the main driving force here and we want to uh, move, we want to move the audience. And the question is then, uh, how, how do we move them? So cinematography is a very broad term. It encompasses motion, not just camera motion, but actors and prop motion called blocking. The choice of color and composition plays a huge role as well. And of course, light adding or subtracting light. That is it in a nutshell. It sounds very simple, but it's very difficult to pull off. For live action cinematographers, there's a bit more to it since they have to deal with cameras and lenses and actually moving them around physically in space, which is a pain. For me, the biggest change from going from live action to CG was that I can just add <laughs> as many lights as I want and with a few clicks and I can change the lens and put it to a godlike 1.2 aperture uh, whenever the hell I want. And you know, when somebody says, oh, are we gonna shoot this anamorphic? I'm like, yeah, of course. Everything's gonna be anamorphic all the time. And if somebody said that in live action, especially like on indie or no budget productions, like anamorphic is usually a no-no, but with CG, of course, why not? So in also like a thing with live action is that you have to have a good stamina to be on set the whole day for weeks and months and be very physical in a lot of cases. That is a factor that plays a big role. And it's, it's a big difference between CG and live action cinematography that maybe some people don't think about. It's, it's very obvious, you know, when you're doing CG cinematography, you're sit, you sit on your chair and you, you just have to exercise your brain. <laughs> but with uh, live action cinematography, you, it's, it's very physical. And sometimes, yeah, that's, that was a big change for me. If you're a live action cinematographer, I think this video will serve you as well and vice versa. We'll be going through some examples from anime, animated movies, uh, games and live action movies. I'll showcase how to move the camera in CG. In this case, I'll be using Houdini specifically, and I'll show you kind of the workflows that I use to get, you know, those cinematics shots. We will be looking at a few cinematics that I did here with Rebelway as well, specifically the Chase and the Nuke, and how I did the cameras for the Rookies contest that we have currently going on and it's live, so you can check that out. So I won't be diving too much into color or lighting, even though they're absolutely essential 
to cinematography, but I will share some amazing links and resources to those topics. Obviously, when we're going to be going through examples and, you know, kind of the theory, I will be, I'll, I'll mention color and lighting every now and then because it is so, you know, heavily integrated with the whole cinematography, uh, the whole cinematography thing. But the majority of the examples, we will be talking just about, you know, camera motion, camera movements, and, you know, how to move the camera and how to move the audience. So, yeah, let's do it. Thank <laughs> you.